There it goes. Okay. Good. Okay.
name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Kiriyadesu, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, amen. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of all ages, amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and brought us to this hour. Therefore we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, to complete this holy day and all the days of our life and all peace with your fear. All envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men, and the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest. Take them away from us and from all your people and from this your holy place. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us. For it is you have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Through the grace, compassion, and love of mankind, of your only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, through whom the glory, the honor, the dominion, and the worship are due unto you. And with him and the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who is on essence with you, now and at all times, and to the ages of all ages. Amen. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of your compassions. Blot up my iniquity. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my iniquity, and my sin is at all times before me. <clears throat> before you, that you might be just in your sayings and might overcome when you are judged. For behold, thou hast conceived in iniquities, and in sins my mother conceived me. For behold, you have loved the truth. You have manifested to me the hidden and unrevealed things of your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with your hyssop, and I shall be purified. You shall wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. You shall make me to hear gladness and joy. The humble bones shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in my inward parts. Do not cast me away from your face, and do not move your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a directing spirit. Then I shall teach transgressors your ways, and the ungodly men shall turn to you. Deliver me from blood, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For if you desired sacrifice, I'd have given it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and humbled heart God shall not despise. Do go to the Lord in your good pleasure to Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you shall be pleased with sacrifices of righteousness, offering and burnt sacrifices. Then they shall offer calves upon your altar. Alleluia. The prayers of the 11th, 12th hour of this blessed day. We offer to Christ our King and our God, beseeching Him to forgive us our sins. From the Psalms of our Father David, the Prophet and King, may His blessings be with us all. Amen. <clears throat> Pray Psalm 140. O Lord, I have cried to you. Hear me. Attend to the voice of my supplication when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. O Lord, set a watch on my mouth and a strong door for my lips. Do not incline my heart to words of evil, to employ excuses for sins with men who work iniquity. And I shall not agree with their choices. The righteous shall chasten me with mercy and reprove me. But do not let the oil of the sinner anoint my head, for yet my prayer also is in their pleasures. Their mighty ones have been swallowed up near the rock. They shall hear my words, for they are delightful. As a lump of earth they are broken upon the ground. Their bones have been scattered at Hades. For my eyes are to you, O Lord, O Lord, I have hoped in you. Do not take away my soul. Keep me from the snare which they have set for me and from the stumbling blocks of those who work iniquity. Sinners shall fall by their own net. I am alone until iniquity passes by. Alleluia. Zuxasio Simon. Holy, holy, holy. The gospel according to St. Luke. May his blessings be with us all. Amen.
And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and de devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him that by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen Christ the Lord. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the ch child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God, and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the faith of all peoples, a light for the revelations to the Gentiles and the glory of all your people Israel. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. May your saints be fulfilled in peace. We worship you, O Christ, our God, if your good Father and the Holy Spirit. For you have come and saved us. Have mercy on us. Behold, I am the... I am about to stand before a just judge, terrified and trembling because of my many sins. For a lifespan and pleasure deserves condemnation. Repent all my soul, so long as you dwell on this earth, for inside the grave dust does not praise. And in death no one remembers, neither in Hades does anyone give thanks. Therefore arise from the slumber of laziness, and entreat the Savior, repenting and saving. God have mercy on me and save me. O Holy Virgin, overshadow you, serpent with your instant help, and keep the ways of evil thoughts away from me, and raise up my ailing soul, prepare an individual for it has gone into a deep sleep. For you are capable, compassionate, and helpful mother, the bearer of the fountain of life, my King, oh my God, Jesus Christ, my hope. And gracious to you, accord, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and exceedingly blessed and glorified be your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us according to our hope in you. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the regions of the earth. And you, O Lord, keep us safe from this generation and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. And blessed are you, O Lord, make me to understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, and enlighten me with your righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Despise not, O Lord, the works of your hands. You have been my refuge from generation to generation. I asked the Lord and said, Have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I have fled unto you. Save me and teach me to do your will. For you are my God, and with you is the fountain of life. In your light shall we see light. Let your mercy come unto those who know you, and your righteousness unto the upright in heart. To you belongs blessing, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. O Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now and forever and ever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to show forth your mercy every morning and your righteousness every night. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal, who is born of the Virgin, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal, who is crucified for us, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, who rose from the dead, ascended to the heavens, have mercy in us. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of all ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy in us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy in us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy in us. O Lord, forgive us our sins. O Lord, forgive us our iniquities. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. O Lord, visit the sake of your people. Heal them for the sake of your holy name. Our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep, O Lord, repose their souls. O you who are without sin, Lord, have mercy in us. O you who are without sin, Lord, help us and receive our supplications. For yours is the glory, the dominion, the triple holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. Make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hail to you, we ask you, O Saint, full of glory, the ever virgin, the Theotokos, the mother of Christ. Lift up our prayers unto your beloved Son, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to the Holy Virgin, who has brought forth unto us the true light, Christ our God. Ask the Lord on our behalf, that he may have mercy on our souls and forgive us our sins. O Virgin Mary, the Holy Theotokos, the faithful advocate for all mankind, intercede on our behalf before Christ, whom you bore, that he may grant the forgiveness of our sins. Hail to our Virgin, the right and true Queen. Hail to the pride of our race who bore to us Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, O our faithful advocate, before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. We exalt you, the Mother of the True Light. We glorify you, O Saint Theotokos, 
for he brought forth unto us to save the whole world. He came and saved our souls. Glory be to our Master, our King, Christ, the Pied of the Apostles, the Crown of the Martyrs, the Joy of the Righteous, the Firmness of the Churches, the Forgiveness of Sins. Proclaim the Holy Trinity in one Godhead. We worship Him and glorify Him. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, Amen. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pantocrator, Creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate the Holy Spirit, and of the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose from the dead according to the scriptures, ascended into the heavens. He sits at the right hand of his Father. And he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, to believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we confess on baptism for the mission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Ah, ah, amen. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us, have mercy on us, and forgive us our sins. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. Have mercy on us, O God, the Father, the Pantocrator. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord God of hosts, be with us. For we have no helper in our hardships and tribulations but you. Absolve, forgive, and remit, O God, our transgressions, those which you have committed willingly and those which you have committed unwillingly, those which you have committed knowingly and those which you have committed unknowingly. The hidden and manifest, O Lord, forgive us for the sake of your holy name which is called upon us. Let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins, and make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, all our sins which we committed against you in this day, whether in deeds or in words or in thoughts or through all senses, please remit and forgive us for the sake of your holy name, as you are good and lover of mankind. God, grant us a peaceful night and a sleep free from all anxiety, and send us an angel of peace to protect us from every evil and every affliction and every temptation of the enemy, through the grace, compassion, and love of mankind of your only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom is due with you and with the Holy Spirit, the life giver who is one essence with you, all glory, honor, and dominion now and forever and to the ages of all ages. Amen. Have mercy on us, O God, and have mercy on us, who at all times and in every hour in heaven and on earth is worshipped and glorified. Christ our God, the good, the long-suffering, the abundant in mercy, and the great in compassion, who loves the righteous and has mercy on the sinners of whom I am chief, who does not wish the death of the sinner, but rather he returns and lives, who calls all to salvation for the promise of good things to come. Lord, receive from us our prayers in this hour and every hour. He is our life and guide us to fulfill your commandments. Sanctify our spirits, cleanse our bodies, conduct our thoughts, purify our intentions, heal our diseases, forgive our sins. Deliver us from every evil grief and distress of heart. Surround us by holy angels that by their camp may be guarded and guided, and attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of imperceptible and infinite glory. For you are blessed forever. Amen. Finally, O Lord, accept our prayers to the intercessions of your beloved Mother, the ever Virgin Theotoko, St. Mary, and all the saints and martyrs who please you since the beginning. Hear us when we say, Thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated.
guys, guys, guys. All right, guys, guys. So um, I need to just go over some etiquette. Whenever there's somebody. sing a song now. If you really have to go to the bathroom, go now. So when the talk starts, you're not going in and out because that's not polite. All right? If you really need to go, go now or forever hold your where you are. All right? <laughs> okay. <coughs> Let's, uh, sing this together. Trample, O oh my soul, always on the enemy. I will not ever fold, for Christ has given me faith. And if the world falls apart around me, Satan will never defeat me. As long as Christ is holding me, I believe that his hand is mighty. And if the world falls apart around me, Satan will never defeat me. As long as Christ is holding me, I believe that his hand is mighty. With Christ I fear not war, I walk among the flames. My faith brings down walls, and even mountains shake. And if the world falls apart around me, Satan will never defeat me. As long as Christ is holding me, I believe that his hand is mighty. And if the world falls apart around me, Satan will never defeat me. As long as Christ is holding me, I believe that his hand is mighty. I will never bow, God's promises lift me up. Christ is my one safeguard, his power is enough. And if the world falls apart around me, Satan will never defeat me. As long as Christ is holding me, I believe that his hand is mighty. And if the world falls apart around me, Satan will never defeat me. As long as Christ is holding me, I believe that his hand is mighty. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today we have with us Susan, who's going to speak with us about the Exodus. Very interesting. Okay. Um, how many of us remember what we spoke about the last uh, two times? Okay. Yes. Okay, good. It's so walls of Jericho and Sodom words. Anybody remember about anything from either lecture? Yes. Kira. Uh, so Excellent. Good. The wells fell uh, outward, not inward. David. It was about that. The reason why I'm asking is I had a thought, an idea. And but I wanted to see before we labor in doing this to see if there's something you would benefit from. I was thinking to, for each one of the lectures, we'll get like an index card size, and each presenter will give like uh, just highlights, the note, like you know the the main topics of the talk. So that way, if you ever enter into discussion or you're reading this part of the Bible, 
you'll have these little note cards that you can refer back to and say, okay, uh, yes, I remember there is a stone that's called so-and-so in Egypt that has this inscription on it. You know, would you guys benefit from that or you probably would never look at it? Those who would benefit, raise your hand. You don't have to. I mean, we're not going to do the effort. If you don't want to, it's fine. It's no big deal. Okay? All right. So, yes. Uh, we can, see, we can yeah, maybe you can, a digital copy. Yeah, any, uh, sure, that might, be, that might be easier. A digital copy would be better than an actual, like, laminated. Okay. So maybe we can have this, and we'll maybe have them do a digital copy, um, and we'll get it to you, um, God willing, either every time, or we'll just compile it all together at the end and give it to you all at once, inshallah. Okay. Thanks, Susan. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. This archaeological series is really, really interesting, guys. And it, keeps, it will keep on getting more and more interesting. So today we're going to talk about Egypt. We're going to talk about the Exodus and the Israelites in Egypt. So the first thing, we know one thing about Egypt. It is rich in archaeology. But how many times is it recorded in history that the Egyptians got defeated. Do you know? How many times did the ancient Egyptians documented on their walls that they lost? Zero. Nobody ever documents that they lost. So put this at the back of your mind. As we are talking through this, because we are trying to find evidence for the Israelites in Egypt, where they went out of the land and God delivered them from slavery harshly, harshly on the Egyptians. So was that a defeat to the Egyptians or not? Big defeat. So we are trying to find evidence for something that the Egyptians got defeated and, and normally there are no documentations, but be ready to be wowed. So in Egypt, we're going to talk about how did the Israelites get to Egypt. Do you know? It's not in Exodus. It's in the book before Exodus. How did the Israelites get to Egypt? Yes. Joseph came to Egypt. How did Joseph come to Egypt? He was sold as a slave. Who sold him? Oh, okay. Sorry. I hooked it up. Not the, not the, not the right one. Okay, so the Israelites came from the descendants of who? Who is the main patriarch? Abraham. And Abraham had? Son. He had a son. His only begotten son is who? To a caravan of traders. Who okay. So Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac had? Jacob and Esau, and Jacob had how many? Twelve. One of them was his beloved Joseph, and he gave him this nice, colorful robe, and his brothers didn't like that. So let's pay attention to this. Joseph, the son of Jacob. Joseph's brothers had sold him as a slave to a caravan of traders who brought him down to Egypt. Then, in an amazing turn of events, he rises to become the highest official in Egypt. He saves the country from a terrible famine, enables his father Jacob and his entire family to settle in the best part of the land, a place called Goshen. That's, all, that's the whole point. The land was called... What? Goshen. So, keep this also in the back of your mind. It's going to come up. Joseph, the 
And then, when they became a mighty nation, when they became a lot of people, God wanted to deliver them out of Egypt. And he sent a man named Moses to ask Pharaoh to let the people go. Did Pharaoh agree? And then what happened when Pharaoh did not agree? Who can say the ten plagues in order? All right. So we have ten plagues. We have ten plagues that hit Egypt. Master, they're called like major catastrophe size events. They hit Egypt. This is biblical documentation right now. This is from the book of Exodus. There were ten plagues, starting with the water of the Nile turning to blood, all the way down to death of the firstborn son to everybody, including Pharaoh sitting on his throne. How does that happen? Do you think this is documented anywhere? Because what you would hear is that the whole story of the Israelites in Egypt is fiction. There is nobody called Moses. This, was, this Egypt is not the real Egypt. It was another secluded area called Egypt. There was no Pharaoh. It was just like the ruler of that uh, small town. You will hear a lot of funny things. But the best thing about archaeology is that we can actually dig things or find documents that you wouldn't be able to explain without the biblical narrative, without the books of the Bible. So, watch this. Ten plagues. And we know their order, right? Right? Okay, who can help me read a couple of verses? Ben? Thus says the Lord, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood, and the fish that are in the river shall die, the river shall stink, and the Egyptians will love to drink the water of the river. Oh, the blood in the water. Oh, say each one. Oh, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, and over all their pools of water, that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout the land of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so. Just as the Lord commanded so, he lifted up the rod and struck the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the water that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died. The river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river. So there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. All right. And so is from the first plague all the way to the tenth plague. That is what the Bible is telling us exactly the story of how it happened. Let's look at this. This is a papyrus. It's called the Epure, the Epure papyrus. Epure papyrus. It's right now in the Netherlands, in a museum in the Netherlands. It was discovered in the area of the Sa'ara, the Sa'ara pyramids. If you're familiar with that, it's closer to the Giza, in closer to Cairo. So the Sa'ara pyramid area had quite a few papyrus discovered in it. This specific papyrus is dated to the 1300 BC the 12th century BC. And it exactly describes in kind of like a poetic form. It describes how there were 
catastrophes that be, be hit Egypt, pretty much. It describes that the river being blood and blood everywhere. It also describes that there are uh, uh, bugs and nates and the grain are destroyed. There are diseases like boils. It describes some death for the animals and death to the children throughout the land of Egypt. It describes that the death of children was the last straw and there was a rebellion against the god Ra and there was the authority of the Pharaoh was lost right after it. The Bible doesn't tell us what happened to Egypt after the plagues, but it kind of makes sense that after 10 plagues, that the person in charge, everybody would not like them to be in charge because that person got them into this problem. So does that, does this, poem on the papyrus sound like anything that we know from the Bible? It sounds a lot like the ten plagues. It sounds a lot like the ten plagues. And it is documented. The authenticity of this papyrus is documented. Yes, Irini has a question. This papyrus is dated 1300 BC. That is about more than 100 years after how they date the Exodus. Now, and we're going to talk about dating the Exodus. But it's about 100 years later. They talked about the problems that happened in the country. It's like when people reminisce on World War I or something right now. They can still write poems about it, but it will be devastating poems. So this is something similar. So this is a very important point. The Epure Papyrus. Remember that name. So when was the Exodus? Because Irini asked a good question that led us to the next question. When was the Exodus? Because the more we learn about it, the more we want to know which pharaoh, what is the time frame? Does that time frame fit what the Bible is telling us? Because there are a few things that the Bible is very specific on. Like, in 1 Kings chapter 6, the first verse, it says, and it came to pass in the 400 year, 418 year after the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon reign over Israel in the month of Ziv, which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord. This whole verse, the whole intention is to say, Solomon started building the temple, guys. Solomon started building the temple. Yay! Okay. When? 480 years after they came out of Egypt. So it's pretty well documented that the beginning of Solomon's reign was in the year 966 B.C. And remember, in B.C., when we go older, we add numbers. We don't s subtract numbers. So the numbers get, get bigger in the years as, we go, as it goes deeper in time. So if it started in, in the year 966, is this is where Solomon is building the temple. 480 years after the Exodus... That puts the Exodus at about the year 1446 BC. Okay? Okay. So now we know from the biblical documents that we have, from the, the, the book of 1 Kings, that the Exodus should be in the year 1446. 
let's go and see what's happening in the year 1446. What's the pharaoh's name? Which pharaoh was it? Does anybody know which pharaoh it was? Josh, yes. Ramses, yes, okay. Ramses is the second best candidate for this. So let's look. Second best candidate is Ramses II. Ramses II was a very strong pharaoh. He was one of the ones, pharaoh of the ones that left plenty of temples, plenty of documents, plenty of walls and, and, and engraves, engravings on the walls. It was amazing. The reign of Ramses II was rich. But does he fit? Let's see. Well, Ramses was way too late for 1446. He was more in the 1200s. So, how does that work? Maybe we're wrong. Maybe, maybe we're wrong. Maybe somebody mistyped a number in 1 Kings chapter 6, the first verse. So, let's see. There are a few things that we need to learn in order to see what, which Pharaoh it was. Number one is that the Bible tells us that Moses was brought up in Pharaoh's house, right? And then he was grown up and he didn't like an Israelite fighting with an Egyptian and he went and killed the Egyptian. And now he's a fugitive. Now he's on the run because according to the law, he should be killed because he killed an Egyptian. He, he was on the run for how long? 40 years until Pharaoh died. So the Pharaoh that was there during Moses' time at least reigned more than what? at least more than 40 years. And then when he returned to talk to the Pharaoh that's gonna let them go, that would be his son. So we're looking for a Pharaoh with a dad Pharaoh that reigned more than 40 years. So, Ramses the second dad is Seti the first and he reigned only 11 years. So Ramses does not work because his dad didn't reign more than 40 years. Maybe Ramses was, was the dad. Okay. Here is another test that we can do. What happened to the, to the Pharaoh that was sitting on the throne in the 10th plague? His first son died. So we're looking for a Pharaoh whose dad reigned 40 years, and his son is not his firstborn. That, that is the next pharaoh. So, if Ramses, if Ramses is the pharaoh, his dad didn't reign long enough. What if he's the dad? Okay, then... Then Merneftah... If Merneftah is the pharaoh that, that Moses was talking to, and Ramses is the dad, that needs to have Seti, Seti the second, to be not firstborn, but Seti the second is the firstborn. That's his oldest firstborn son. So it doesn't work. So Ramses the second doesn't work, and Merneftah doesn't work either. So why do we keep saying it's Ramses the second? Is there a reason why we say it's Ramses the second? Because of this verse. The only reason we say it, it's because in Exodus 1, 11, chapter 1, verse 11, it says that there was storehouses that the Israelites were building in the city of Phithom and Ramses. Those are the names of the cities. But we know that the names of the cities can change. Or there could be minor cities that, that existed then. 
that was not really named after the Pharaoh. Like there was a city called Dan that the tribe of Dan built. When the Bible writes about it, they say Abraham, which is Dan's great-great-grandfather, went as far as Dan. That city didn't exist. It, w it was named something different. It was named something different and renamed to Dan. The people of Dan built it. They made it bigger and renamed it. But when the Bible tells us about it, he tells us about the city that is, would be known to the people at that time. So this is the only reason some people say it is Ramses II. But it's not. Mish Ramses. Tabhu. If it's not Ramses, you mean. Let's look again. We need a pharaoh around 1446. This here tells us about the criteria that Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and he dwelt 40 years in the land of Midian. So let's see, listen to this video. It's going to tell us who is the Pharaoh. Okay, so if we're going to talk about the Pharaoh of the Exodus, then we need to talk about the historian Manetho because he's an extra biblical source for the Exodus. Now, the writings of Manetho are lost to us, uh, except through the quotes from later writers. And the earliest of those writers is the first century Jewish historian Josephus. This is the complete works of Josephus. And in it, Josephus wrote that one of Egypt's principal writers was Manetho, who was by birth an Egyptian. He wrote a history of his own country in the Greek tongue, out of their sacred records. Josephus says of Manetho, I will set down his very words as if I were to bring the very man himself into a court for a witness. Okay, so what Josephus is saying here uh, is that the A.D. first century historian Josephus is directly quoting the earlier third century B.C. historian Manetho, who has written a history of Egypt using these much earlier Egyptian records. There's no doubt that Manetho wrote about the Israelites because he described a people whose leader was called Moses, who were captives in Egypt. But when they went out of that country, they built a city in Judea and called it Jerusalem. Then Manetho says that these people took their journey from Egypt during the reign of Amenophis, the king of Egypt. Amenophis is the Greek form of the Egyptian name. Amenhotep. Amenhotep is the Egyptian name of Amenophis that who wrote? What's the name of the priest, the historian that wrote that record? Menetho. Menetho wrote a record that is no longer accessible to us. It's lost to history or destroyed, but somebody coded Menetho word for word. And that historian is called Josephus. So Josephus quoted Manetho. He's a priest in Egypt, a historian that wrote about it around 3 BC. In the 3rd century BC, I mean. And Manetho had all the documents available to him. And he knew exactly who the Israelites were, who's the leader. He named Moses by name. And in addition to this, he said that it was at the time of Amenhotep. Okay, so which Amenhotep? If we only have Amenhotep in the 18th dynasty in Egypt. You know how in, in Egypt we have dynasties after each other? So it's only in the 18th dynasty that we find pharaohs with the name Amenhotep. But we don't have only one Amenhotep. We have three Amenhotep's. So Mineto said something about that. He said that the Israelites were captives that left Egypt at the time of Amenhotep um, or Amenophet. And they built a city in Jerusalem and they called it and they called it Jerusalem. They called the city Jerusalem. Okay. 
So let's talk about Amenhotep. First, second, or third Amenhotep. There are three of them. The first Amenhotep, Amenhotep the first. He reigned from 1546 to 1526. Amenhotep the third is from 1440 to 1377 BC. Do you remember the date of the Exodus that we found from 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1? What was the date of the Exodus? 1446. So let's put 1446 on that timeline. 1446 is right here. It lines up exactly with one of the Amenhotubs. He's Amenhotub II. And he reigned for 27 years. But remember how Ramses was not, Ramses was not the pharaoh because of his dad's reign and his son was not was the firstborn. So let's apply that criteria to Amenhotep and see if he fits also. So between this is the date of the Exodus, like David said, 1446. And this is the time of Amenhotep's reign. So Amenhotep's dad is Tohutmus III. Tohutmus III reigned for how long? All what we want to know if it's more than 40 years. Is it more than 40 years? Check. He checks, the, he checks that point. OK. And then he reigned for 27 years, and then came his son. And who was his son? Remember that every firstborn son would die in Exodus 11.5. Let's read that verse. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the animals. Devastating. It's like everybody dies. Everybody has a house. There is a death there. And if they have a stable, even the stable has a death there. So that means that the firstborn of, of Amenhotep, the son of Amenhotep, I can't recall his name right now, but he made an elaborate story to say that he was sitting, and this, this is a steely that's sitting right there in, on, on the foot uh, step of the Sphinx. He sits, he say that the gods came to him and told him that he would reign over Egypt even though he's not the firstborn son in order to get some legitimacy, in order to get some acceptance from the people even though he was not the firstborn. He made that whole story about the gods appearing to him so he would gain some sympathy, sympathy from those who are very religious. And we have that tablet available to us to look at in the Egyptian Museum. So that tells us that that son Pharaoh was not a firstborn because his older brother just got lost in history and we, they stopped talking about him all of a sudden. So that tells us that pretty much Amenhotep II fits the story of the Exodus. Yes, Irini. Let's, okay. This is a good point, but let's read it again because I went and looked to see because it says here that Tehotmos actually lived for, well, no. Amenhotep actually lived after 1446 till all the way to, to 1424. So that Pharaoh that was sitting on the throne lived and didn't die. And let's, if we go to Exodus in this chapter, read it again. 
it doesn't say that the Pharaoh went down in the water. Because that's exactly what I did when I started studying this. It's like, Pharaoh should have died. But the Bible doesn't say that the Pharaoh died. Read it again. Yes, Anthony. The Pharaoh's chariots went. Everything, everything that is in Egypt, everything is Pharaoh's. Everything is Pharaoh's. So when they say Pharaoh's stuff went in or Pharaoh's went in, it's not Pharaoh himself. It's Pharaoh's army leaders. It's Pharaoh's chariots. It's Pharaoh's anything. It's the whole army that went after the Israelites. And then that, where, where that Pharaoh lived is also important. Remember in the beginning when we said the Israelites lived in the land of Goshen. The land of Goshen is also very close to the land of Avaris. When they excavated the land of Avaris, they found the remaining of an 18th dynasty palace for Pharaoh. Moses went to Pharaoh every other day. He could not have traveled like weeks or months and came back. This palace was very close to where the Israelites lived. And this is pretty much why Amenhotep II is the best candidate. There's still some argument within the archaeology about which one. Some people support this, some people support that. But now that you know why the people that support Ramses II say it's Ramses, why the people that support Amenhotep II think it's Amenhotep II. And that's all I have today. And there is more, there are a lot more that you can learn about ancient Egypt. Glory be to God forever. If we are to, David asked the question, why does it matter who the king was? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. We know the Bible is true. But every angle that we study the Bible, we see that the Bible is actually conform, confirming what we learn from other disciplines. It's confirming history. It's confirming stuff that we see in science. It's confirming a whole lot of other disciplines. We don't need it to know that the Bible is true. But when somebody says there is nothing in ancient Egypt that tells you that there is anybody called the Israelites or there is nobody called Moses or there, is no, there was never plagues in Egypt, look at the amount of flies they still have till now. That's reminisce or like leftovers from the plagues. There's a lot of things that we see in archaeology that confirms that the Bible is true. That the Bible story as it's written is accurate. It's not only somebody wrote the story, but the details is accurate. Does that make sense? Yes, Amy. What was that date confirmed for the date of the Jericho story? Because the Jericho story was, uh, the date was 1410, I think. Yes. And this is before 1410. So this book also that the story of Jericho happened Yes, it, Jericho has to happen after the Exodus, not before. Yes, correct. Any other questions? Yes. The verse itself, when you read it closely, and this is what, what uh, scholars would say, the verse itself does not indicate that the person of Pharaoh himself went in. Normally, Pharaoh's command from the back. 
this is how, how army structure is. Pharaoh is at the very, very end, the last one in the back. But everybody that he cared about, all his army leaders, all his chariots, his horses, and his men went in. And if you think about it, he just lost his son. Like, every, the, whole st the whole country was mourning. So, yeah, it, I'm sure it would have been difficult. You guys know, and, uh, you guys heard of the city Sohag in Egypt? Do you know where the name comes from? From Sohag. So, So, anybody know what So is in Coptic? Bima So, huh? So, like the number. Six. It's the number six, right? So it comes from So, and Hag is like house. So, so Hag is like the sixth house or the sixth storage house. So you know how in Egypt, they store, uh, Joseph, he stored like the, the wheat and stuff to sell it after the famine. So they named this because there was not much in this city at the time. So they named this place Suhag, which was like the sixth storage house. And it had these all over, you know, Egypt, the different, you know, storage houses. But that's where Suhag got its name from. It was one of the storage houses for the, you know, the grain. Yeah, if anybody wants to look at uh, some books, uh, Ms. Susan has some, you know, books here you can look at so if you want to order some and take a look at you can do that okay let's say a prayer <clears throat> in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit one god amen finally O lord accept Finally, O Lord, accept our prayers and the intercessions of your beloved mother, the ever virgin Theotokos, St. Mary, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints and martyrs. Hear us, Lord, when we say thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, love of God the Father, his grace, only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give fellowship, communion, the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, peace, the Lord be with you all. Amen.